Welcome to module 8, lecture 2. We will continue with durability of concrete and in this lecture, we will look into frost action and introduce rebar corrosion, reinforcement corrosion. So, essentially we will look at frost action and we will introduce rebar corrosion today. Now, you know uh, frost action of frost uh, uh, usually is uh, more relevant to the cold countries, but in Indian subcontinent, Indian scenario, the Himalayan areas are susceptible to frost action, freezing and thawing and uh, uh, you know the, the problem of freezing and thawing can uh, result in kind of deterioration of concrete. Now, water if present in the concrete can freeze at lower temperature and you know the ice occupies more volume than the water. Now, presence of this you know freezing point of water is not fixed unless it is distilled water. We know that depression of freezing point occurs when you have got uh, salts, you know presence of salts actually lowers the freezing point, presence of salt lowers the freezing point, salt present lowers the freezing point all right, presence of salt lowers the freezing point and uh, fine pores freezes at fine pores freezes at uh, lower temperature right. So, this is one issue. Second issue is since the porosity pore sizes differ, salt concentration would differ at different location in the concrete, there is no single freezing point of water in concrete there is no single freezing point of water in concrete right. So, therefore, there is no single freezing, po freezing point of water in concrete and in gel pores there will be hardly any freezing. So, in gel pores there will be no freezing, gel pores there will be no freezing, no freezing occurs in gel pores. So, what it means even the concrete is saturated all you know and the temperature goes down, freezing will not occur simultaneously in all the pores, only in some pores freezing will occur depending, depending upon the salt concentration, size of the pore and of course, how close you know their proximity to the surface or freezing temperature. Now, when freezing occurs, freezing causes 9 percent volume increase and freezing occurs gradually because all will not all pores will not get you know water in all the pores will not get frozen in one go. So, there is a 9 percent volume increase, there is a 9 percent volume increase. Now, this volume increase actually causes a kind of an excess pressure. So, the water in unfrozen capillary is subjected to hydraulic pressure by this expanding volume of ice. So, what you can look into is something like this, you have the concrete, the, the, the aggregates, aggregates etcetera, etcetera and then you have got pores of various kind interconnected system and so on. The water freezes in some of the pores, water freezes in some of the pores, the other pores are still free, other pores are still free and the hydraulic pressure, the hydraulic pressure in this you know hydraulic pressure, hydraulic pressure in this pores would cause an outward pressure onto the concrete because this is this is frozen water this is just water which is unfrozen and since this is expanding and this is connected this will actually exert hydraulic pressure in the surrounding concrete matrix so as a result as a result there is internal pressure generated this unrelieved pressure inside induces 
internal tensile stresses and there can be local failure. So, there can be local failure, local failure could occur and when thawing occurs again and when thawing occurs this old space you know for example, if this was your pore space uh, which actually because of hydraulic pressure cracks occurred in this manner. Now, when actually cracks you know cracks got expanded or something of this kind. Now, next time when next time when water freezes water will enter into this as well as into the new cracks as well as into the new cracks and freezing action will be there in this new cracks you know cracked or new newly formed uh, fissures or spaces again. So, in other words now this will exert more hydraulic pressure this will exert you know this 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 will cause more hydraulic pressure into water where there are you know if this is the water where the pores were. So, this will exert more pressure because more pore space are available which are filled with ice. So, some spaces which were not earlier filled by water now get filled up by water and can get frozen again and uh, some portion might get frozen again and if they get frozen then that would actually exert a pressure outward and therefore, this process you know the cycle will continue cycle will continue. So, this cycles as it continues the process is you know repeated several time and then finally, the damage to the concrete will occur finally, damage to the concrete will occur. So, that is the action of frost in on concrete this is the action of frost on concrete. So, when there are additional additional mechanism when capillary becomes you know it becomes ice the vapor pressure reduces. So, when capillary pores once ice formation had occurred the vapor pressure would reduce. So, gel water will move to the capillary gel water will move to the capillary capillary. So, gel to capillary because you know ice has formed here the ice formation has occurred here. So, here ice has occurred. So, therefore, gel to water will move gel water will move from gel to capillary and then again it will get frozen and the hydraulic pressure will increase. So, this is a kind of a you know uh, kind of a uh, cyclic process a repeated repetitive process I mean it is sort of uh, sort of uh, uh, cascading effect first you have uh, some gel formation I mean some ice formation in some of the capillaries resulting in excess hydro hydraulic pressure causes cracking and next time those crack or fissures that has been created will again filled up by water and therefore, additional space is now available more hydraulic pressure and whenever there is a hydraulic you know when there ever there is a uh, uh, ice formation in the capillaries the vapor pressure reduces and gel water moves to the capillaries and again this froze freezes and therefore, you know kind of a cascading effect and after number of cycles actually you will find that uh, there is a kind of uh, uh, disruption of the concrete and so on and so forth. Now, this other effect is when liquid water diminishes concentration of solute also increases and uh, osmotic pressure increases adding to hydraulic pressure. So, therefore, concentration of the solute which changes you know basically as we said uh, that uh, solute concentration causes diffusion we will look into that a little bit more sometime later on, uh, but, but right now we can we can just understand this for example, this phenomena will be something like this supposing I have I have a solute two tanks I have two tanks and there is a semi permeable membrane here and I have got water here distilled water and here also distilled water, but with some sort of solute solution present in this. So, here I have got solution here the solvent after some time you will find the concentration tend to be same after some time the you find that you know after some time one finds the concentration becomes same concentration becomes same. So, concentration becomes same concentration becomes same, but supposing 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 you know I put uh, supposing I put 
a piston here instead I put a piston here I put a piston here I put a piston here you know and apply pressure it will remain same the concentration would not change concentration would not change concentration does not change if I apply pressure here through a piston. So, this pressure difference is you know is called also it is uh, you know this is this pressure which I have applied implies that there is a pressure difference existing between high concentration to low concentration and this is called osmotic pressure this is called osmotic pressure osmotic pressure you know and due to osmotic pressure solute moves from high concentration to low concentration high concentration to low concentration and in fact uh, it can also be shown that uh, the pressure by concentration is something you know it is proportional to R t. So, you in fact you pressure by concentrate volume 1 by volume is the concentration. So, P v so it follows almost the you know this pressure or sometimes denoted by pi it follows the gas flow itself right. So, ideal gas flow itself. So, this this can be related you know. So, pressure the osmotic pressure can be related to the gas flow and so on and so forth right. So, that is what it is. So, osmotic pressure the solute concentration being different it can cause actually an osmotic pressure and it can add to the hydraulic pressure. Empty air voids or capillaries when present can relieve this pressure, but supposing I have got empty capillaries or empty voids which is not filled with water and then when hydro hydrostatic pressure is applied this get ruptured and the water can enter into this one and this can relieve some of this pressure. So, empty air voids if I if present in the system it will cause relieving of the pressure release of the pressure and thereby you know uh, the, the disruption of the concrete or deterioration of concrete is controlled. So, extent of damage can be surface scaling to complete disintegration as layers of ice are formed initiating from surface and progress through the depth. So, essentially it starts from the surface and penetrates inside and uh, surface scaling sometime constant constant you know complete disintegration of uh, the concrete from the surface and so on and so forth. So, now after certain number of cycles after num you know certain number of cycles. So, it does not occur in one cycle first freezing then thawing. So, more water comes in next again freezing and disruption and again thawing. So, further more water comes in after certain number of cycles over the years actually you find that surface concrete actually is coming out is popping out or something like that uh, disintegration is occurring. So, that is what is action of frost. If the concrete remains dry it is not vulnerable to frost, frost action because R h below 80 to 90 percent is highly resistant to frost action because water is not there what to freeze. So, if the relative humidity is less than 100 percent less than 90 percent vapor pressure only vapor should be there and it will not freeze since vapors will be there it will not freeze. So, dry concrete is not vulnerable to frost action very very important dry concrete is not vulnerable to frost action is not vulnerable to frost action. So, therefore, again we see if we keep water out everything is fine if I can keep water out everything is fine. So, therefore, frost resistance concrete one way is to keep it dry but that may become not that may not be possible all the time. But what you can do there was another issue he said if there are empty pore space not filled with water where water can enter during you know during the freezing to relieve the hydraulic pressure right that some or other would be able to extend the freezing and thawing number number of cycles of freezing and thawing and the durability of the concrete would increase. In other words frost resistant resistance of the concrete will increase. So, deliberate air entrainment in low water cement ratio concrete. Now, low water cement ratio concrete will actually allow less water into it less water ingress ingress less water ingress and if I have air entrainment 
Now, what air entrainment will do? It will actually kind of if this is your concrete create, create a sort of isolated small pore system, spherical this well distributed small pore system, air entrainment, air entrain concrete. So, they are well distributed fine pores, but close pores, yeah, well distributed fine pores, but close pores. Now, these pores initially are dry, not filled with water. Now, once hydrostatic pressure, hydraulic pressure inside the capillary is increased, you know, these pore boundaries might get ruptured and water enters there. Now, as the water enters, pressure is released and therefore, the surrounding concrete is, is remains intact or unaffected, surrounding concrete remains unaffected, this concrete remains unaffected, this concrete, this concrete remains unaffected, you know concrete here will remain unaffected. So, deliberate air entrainment actually increases the freeze-thaw life, you know presence of deliberately entrained well distributed air voids adjacent to water filled capillaries allows water to flow into them and relieve pressure. So, that is the idea adjacent to the water filled capillaries allows water to flow into them and relieves pressure and relieves pressure. So, pressure is relieved actually. So, therefore, the skeleton or the matrix solid matrix solid skeleton remains unaffected you know. So, therefore, it can last, but then the deliberate air entrainment air, air entrained voids which are there once the air water enters there that becomes part of the interconnected pore system. So, next thawing cycle during the next thawing the water will penetrate into it and then again it is also a part of the whole system, but all the air voids will not be filled in in one go. So, some will get actually filled in by water they were you know they will come into the uh, uh, um, permeable or interconnected permeable pore space, but some will still remain for the next cycle and for the next cycle and so on and so forth. So, therefore, number of cycles then air entrained concrete can withstand is much higher than non air entrained concrete and this can be seen from this diagram. You see when temperature is going down this is the lower temperature, temperature lower temperature, low temperature, temperature is lower there is thermal contraction of the concrete and if thermal contraction would have con continued after 0 degree centigrade it would have gone like this parallel to this. But what happens is if I look at the bulk expansion, if I look at the bulk expansion bulk look at the bulk behavior then from this point it starts expanding actually why? If it is not air entrained it starts expanding because the hydraulic pressure causes the whole thing to hydraulic pressure of the freezing you know because of the ice being formed inside it causes it to sort of excess you know internal pressure and that causes a kind of expansion till it fails till the surface concrete goes out. While if I have air entrained concrete if I have air entrained concrete the pressure is relieved pressure is relieved and as the pressure is relieved contract skeleton is uh, you know it, it it gets contracted because of the thermal contraction effect, thermal contraction effect and this all together all together you know there is actually a reduction in the volume even more than thermal contraction, more than thermal contraction. So, it is not only uh, frost resistant air entrained concrete not only exhibit a kind of uh, uh, reduction in reduction in the uh, you know thermal contraction effect, but uh, it also shows further reduction in the volume of the whole system because the pressure that was that would have been created hydraulically would have been released somewhere else and uh, the contraction is even more in this particular case. So, additional contraction this is because of the relief of the hydraulic pressure this is because of the relief of the hydraulic pressure. So, this hydraulic pressure 
that is that gets released in a way there is no pressure some pores will be filled with ice and the contraction of ice will also you know it will also take place this all results in volume contraction instead of volume expansion of air and drained concrete. So, that is that is actually uh, protection from frost attack. Essentially the effect is loss of surface concrete, effective thickness then can be reduced when frost attack is occurring and some sort of empirical formulations are there. So, one can conceive actually with time this is my section thickness, this is my section thickness with time the strength will reduce from the surface to inside. So, this is my design strength at this point f c k, but the strength will be lower with time. So, if it is at very large time or infinite time h is the let us say h is the at infinite time h is the uh, you know h is the uh, depth up to which the strength reduction occurs because there is a freezing cycle and thawing cycle. So, moisture will get in during thawing frozen and once cooled again you know the, the, the it will it would uh, you know some of it will come out. So, finally, the water will again get in. So, there is a wetting drying scenario and normally there is a uh, depth of influence beyond which uh, no freezing action would be freezing action of frost action will not be seen. So, effective in this one therefore, since f c k is only available up to this in fact, one can conceive that effective thickness is reduced and some um, empirical formula is available there are a number of them in fact, this is one of them uh, f c k at a distance d is given by f c k multiplied by 1 minus 1 minus d by h into n. Now, what is d? d is the depth and n is a n depends upon number of cycles n depends upon number of cycle h is the depth of influence maximum depth. So, when you know when when t is equals to 0 everywhere it will be f c k. So, when t is equals to 0 everywhere it will be f c k. So, this value should turn out to be 0 this value should turn out to be 0 this value should turn out to be 0. So, this value you know it will be h by d is the depth and this to the power very large value makes this value altogether small because this value will be a fraction d by h is a fraction 1 minus d by h is also a fraction and fraction to the power large value would tend to make it very very small. So, when t is equals to 0 f this value will be f c k everywhere. Now, when t is equals to infinity after very very long time this is equals to 0. So, this 0 means this is 0 means this is equals to 1. So, f c k at d and this is valid up to the depth of h beyond h this is not valid. So, any depth up to d you know this value at t is equals to infinity this value will tend to be t, t n will tend to be 0. So, this a to anything to the power 0 is equals to 1. So, 1 minus 1 is equals to 0. So, f you know this value would tend to be at a depth this will be this will tend to be uh, this will tend to be f uh, 0 only small you know at over a very long period of time all all you know f c k value will tend to be 0 that is what this equation says. All right, but then this is t is infinity. So, this is one empirical equation through which one can actually get some idea. One can get some idea that this is the how the strength changes. So, this is f c. So, f c would change q strength will change like this parabolically in this manner and one can fit an equation of this kind to this particular one right. So, that is what it is. So, this is you know since it is empirical I have just taken part of it and to explain the scenario. There are similar other other uh, empirical model. For example, if you consider rate of dis r as the rate of disintegration, one can assume step variation like this. Step variation like this. So first cycle, you know, this is the depth of disintegration. This x is the depth of disintegration. This is time. Second cycle there is more and so on and so forth and you can actually approximate. So, these are each cycle every cycle there is some depth of penetration increases and you can actually linearly fit this. So, depth of penetration can be linearly related to time. In other words the rate can be one can find out the rate which will be slope of this line. 
slope of this line would be the rate. So, rate is given by another formula empirical formula a coefficient called C environmental C n b securing securing C age a constant to the power 0.7 and F C k plus 8 to the power minus 1.4. Now, S is the S is the you know loss of structurally effective concrete is a function of rate into time. So, rate of structurally effective concrete loss of structural effective concrete is given by this which is the slope of this line and uh, you know a structurally effective. So, this depth represents the depth of disintegration. So, S equals to R into T. Now, how is C environmental C curing and C age? And C environment is related to the environment of exposure, C curing is related to the curing condition and at age after you know and these are constants. So, now these are given in the next slide. C curing is given as 0 0.85 plus 0 0.17 log D, where D is the curing days. So, you have higher curing days, C curing will be less, in fact rate will be less. So, you see you can see the factors which affects the frost attack. C age, so if the age is more, obviously this value should be less, but this will also depend upon the supplementary cementitious material or pozzolanic material that you are using. For example, PSF stands for the proportion of you know percentage of uh, silica fume, percentage of slag, percentage of fly ash. P that is a proportion of silica fume, blast furnace slag, and fly ash respectively expressed as percentage of mass of total binder content. So, if you use slag, fly ash and silica fume this effect of age will be less because this value will be. So, large values of this one this tends to be smaller value this you know 1 minus this this higher value this smaller value. So, this will become this will become 1 minus this. So, this will become larger you know. So, this this is something to do with the effect of age. C environment is given as 80 to 164 very severe condition latitude uh, 60 plus minus 5 that is you know subtropical climate 40 to 80 for severe latitude 60 plus minus 10 and 20 to 40 for moderate uh, and for favorable no freeze thaw. So, depending upon the situation one can choose this environmental condition I think uh, this is uh, this is there is something wrong this is not correct this should be 20 possibly. So, whatever it is, so environmental condition depending upon environmental condition, moderate condition uh, or severe exposure condition or very severe exposure condition this value of C would depend and therefore, you can obtain the rate, you can obtain the rate from this expression. F C k stands for the characteristic strength, 8 is taken as 1.65 sigma. In other words, this represents a kind of mean strength. So, larger the strength R will be smaller, larger the strength more the better the grade of concrete R will be smaller and A is a factor, A is a factor you know is a constant depending upon S into T is a total time actually S is the T S into T is the time. So, what we have seen is A is a constant depending upon air content. So, you have high air content there will be a reduction. So, A is a factor or constant depending upon air content higher the air content less will be the rate and therefore, S will be you know S is since S is R into T right. So, R less that means for you know loss of structural concrete would be slower process. So, it can last for longer period of time. So, that is related to frost attack and uh, surface deterioration by leaching that occurs in uh, some of those uh, you know many many places exposed to water. So, rate of disintegration for salt weathering situation is given by again a formula of the similar kind see this is an empirical formula, but although the values may not be applicable universally, but it tells us what are the factors which governs this. In other words, in case of frost section, it is governed by the air content a to the power minus 7, the strength of the concrete or grade of the concrete and it also depends upon environmental curing and age, uh, which again in turn depends upon fly ash, slag and uh, you know silica film content. All right.
Similarly, uh, leaching would depend upon C environmental and C curing. The C curing is same as before. Curing it will depend upon curing age. FC, you know, the formula was if you can see that uh, if you can remember the formula is 0.85 plus 0.17 log of D. So D is the curing age. So larger the curing age, C cure is less, right? Larger the curing age, less C cure is less, and uh, so on and so forth. So C environment is given for the Gulf condition, for marine condition, and for normal condition. This for favorable condition, F C K to the power 3.3. So that means it is the curing condition is important. Same more the curing condition, C cure will be less. Environment depends upon marine environment, Gulf condition. The leaching, because as it, you remember, we talked of sea water attack. We said that the ettringite and uh, uh, you know the calcium sulfate which are formed are leached out. So this leaching rate is given by this formula, and S gives you the structurally disintegrated concrete R into T. So this gives us uh, third one is related to abrasion of ice and the similar sort of situation when there is a marine environment or environment where there is water and you have an ice body. So abrasion depth ABR can be found out. Now the phenomena is like this you have a ice comes and hits it and you have a two way section you know there is a tau acting there, there is a tau acting there, there is a tau acting there, tau shear stress and also a sigma normal stress. So both sigma shear stress because it will heat at an angle and you will have both you know shear stress and uh, sigma the normal stress acting onto it and this causes abrasion of the paste. So the paste goes out first and then exposes the aggregate exposes the aggregate and when we have further shear stress coming and hitting the aggregate and the normal stresses coming and hitting the paste it the aggregates gets loosened. So loosening of the aggregate to docker and finally the aggregate will go out and then further shear stress and the normal stress will be acting and this phenomena may continue depending upon how the ice hits and this scenario you know this causes aggregate loss and structural disintegrated concrete. So S is the movement of ice sheet in kilometer the formula given is something like this. The depth of abrasion due to ice is given by a i log n i n n you know n 2 by uh, n s by n 1 r i and 1 minus a i into b. So, b is given by this b is related to strength s is the movement of ice sheet in kilometer and n etcetera we will just define. So, when an ice comes and heats the behavior is something like this. So, a is the volume of aggregate proportion of radius r. Now, you see this is in this one r i there is a sum i going from 1 to n. So, s a is the you know uh, volume proportion of aggregate of size r larger the size it would depend upon the size larger size larger the size and sum total for all sizes should be taken into account. B is related to strength n is the number of ice impacts subscript s and l i denotes impact during sheet movement and during loosening of aggregate. So, first is the sheet movement is this first one you know s and you know s in movement in kilometer n s and n l n s stands for number of uh, heat during the initial phase and uh, s stands for later on for loosening after loosening of the aggregate. S is the kilometer movement of the ice b is an abrasion rate of aggregate and a b r is given by this formula. When bond between aggregate and cement has disintegrated under free stuff action a b r could be one part this was the earlier formula and this is the case when bond has cement and uh, aggregate has deteriorated under free stuff action already. So that means previous one was before when there is no free stuff action, but once the free stuff action has occurred this depth of abrasion is given by this, this you know this equation which is more simple. A stands for the aggregate of size volume proportion of the aggregate of size ith size and B is of course strength 1 over strength you know 3 divided by 3.3 divided by strength. So, it is an empirical formula into S, S stands for movement of the ice sheet. So, 3 by F C K into S millimeter per kilometer. So, movement of ice in kilometer 
So, that is what it is. So, there is, there is an empirical formula again gives you the absorption by i's. Now, what is the what are the ways? What are the ways actually we we uh, you know what are the ways actually we protect against this kind of scenario? Uh, we have seen one is the low water cement ratio that is strength should be good. Higher the strength, all these cases of frost action, uh, abrasion by ice, etcetera or any leaching even in marine environment, uh, this would be less. So, one is the strength. In case of frost action, it is air entrainment. If you have air entrainment, this will perform better. And uh, curing condition, age etcetera. So, the factors you have seen. So, protection should be low water cement ratio, air entrainment. Now, air entrainment reduces the strength a little bit, because you are introducing new pores that will reduce the strength somewhat. Essentially, air entrainment, air entraining admixtures we defined when you talked of, um, you know, admixtures. So, air entraining admixtures can be added, but they would have small action, you know, slight reduction in the strength as well. So, that is the protection against frost action, high water cement ratio, good curing, as well as air entraining, air entrained concrete. Now, let us look into the introduce corrosion. One of the major problem or most common problem is the corrosion of rebar. Rebar corrosion is one of the major problem in RCC and even in P PSC free stress concrete corrosion is a major problem and worldwide corrosion is a big problem for metals a lot of loss or money goes in repair due to corrosion. So, let us define corrosion. First of all we must understand iron like, like we talked of concrete other day we said that you know Fe does not exist in nature in isolated form rather it exists as oxide, sulphide etcetera and in ores. So, in ores minerals in we mine it and extract it. So, the minerals in which iron is contained they exist in oxides, sulphide etcetera etcetera. Therefore, iron is not a natural material. Now, how do I get iron out of it? I expend a cons considerable energy in extracting Fe from ore, thus mu chemical potential that the other day we talked about mu you know the chemical potential we talked about mu of Fe will be higher than FeS because you have given a lot of energy. So, mu of Fe will be definitely greater than mu of you know FeS or Fe, Fe 3 O 4 etcetera etcetera magnetite, hematite whatever you call it. So, you actually give an energy. So, therefore, it will have a tendency to come to a natural state. Hence, Fe has a tendency to react and attain a stable state. Therefore, it has a tendency thermodynamic tendency because you have its potential chemical potential is higher. React, reaction of Fe with its environment causes loss of material from structural form where Fe exists. For example, you have a structural steel corrosion would cause reduction from the steel member or in case of reinforcement there could be loss of material, but then loss of material might manifest itself in different manner in case of reinforced concrete and in structural system. So, reinforced concrete it might manifest itself by kind of expansion we will come to that later on. So, but loss of F U this environment causes loss of the material, you know it causes loss of the material from the structural form. For example, reinforcement might lose this material and uh, if this loss of material metal which we are calling as deterioration of the metal, if it leads to impediment of functional performance that is not able to do the functional performance anymore that is corrosion. So, therefore, functional performance is important a little bit of loss of metal if it does not crea create any problem as far as my functional performance is concerned, I would not call it corrosion in engineering terms. So, when functional performance remains unaffected by reaction, it may not be corrosion in engineering sense. Some loss, very loss, little loss, rate of loss, very low, small, slow loss, if that is occurring, I may not call it really a corrosion process. Corrosion process is important when there is a loss of there is a loss in the you know loss 
in the functional properties. So that is how we define corrosion process, that is how we define corrosion process and if we classify the corrosion, classification can be low temperature or high temperature. You know uh, corrosion is generally referred to metal, but then corrosion also exists for many other items even you might find some book of corrosion of concrete. So uh, although this is basically deterioration we are talking about, but here we are specifically mentioning about metal or rather reinforcement or rebar, we are looking at rebar corrosion. So classification of corrosion in metal can be low temperature corrosion or high temperature corrosion or you can classify in terms of direct or electrochemical corrosion, some may be simply oxidized. For example, there is a hot iron high temperature corrosion, you put in oxygen, just you know blow oxygen over high temperature uh, iron at high temperature, it might get oxidized. So, it is a high temperature corrosion and it is a direct corrosion, but otherwise there can be corrosion which is electrochemical corrosion, but a better way to classify corrosion will be wet, wet corrosion and dry corrosion. So, direct corrosion, wet dry corrosion is usually maybe direct corrosion, but wet corrosion is largely electrochemical in nature, it is largely electrochemical in nature, it is electrochemical in nature and occurs in presence of liquid, quite often it is water in aqueous solution or electrolytes in presence of electrolytes and this is the most common. So, wet corrosion occurs in presence of liquid in aqueous solution or electrolytes and is the most common and rebar corrosion is wet corrosion in presence of water, rebar corrosion is wet corrosion in presence of water because reinforcement is not subjected to high temperature most often because of the cover concrete. Even in case of fire it takes time for heat to reach there and oxidation is a secondary aspect that is not, but, but within the enforcement when water penetrates electrochemical corrosion can occur. So, therefore, rebar corrosion is largely wet corrosion and electrochemical corrosion. So, it is largely wet and electrochemical corrosion, right, largely wet and electrochemical corrosion. Now, to understand corrosion we might understand what is a galvanic cell, you know we are familiar with battery we are familiar with battery. So, this is my zinc shell, dry cell and this is my graphite or carbon, another electrode. So, there are two electrodes carbon and this is zinc. Now, if I connect a battery, this is positive terminal, this is negative terminal. So, if I connect a battery through this, what happens is light glows and we know this is a phenomena is electrolysis essentially, ammonium chloride solution is here, could be if it is uh, or ammonium chloride molten fused form or whatever it could be there. What happens is zinc ion actually moves out of it, zinc ion moves out of it, right. And basically electron moves in this direction, electron moves along this direction. So, my positive current movement is along this direction, positive current movement is along this direction. So, zinc ion moves along this direction, zinc ion move along this direction and electron moves along this direction. So, my positive ion current movement is along this direction. So, this is my positive electrode. So, this is my cathode, this is my anode, that is a galvanic cell, we know that, you know battery we use all of them. So, whenever we connect a kind of load to a battery and this is governed by the, you know the, the, the zinc that will get dissolved, the amount of zinc would get, get dissolved is governed by Faraday's law, which says that mass of the metal dissolved, mass of the metal dissolved is proportional to current into time or the charge I into T thus coulomb you know. So, that much charge it will proportional to charge. Now, this constant it can be written as you know it is in fact, it can be stated in another manner. You need 96500 coulomb right or Faraday's constant. So, 996500 coulomb is required to deposit 1 gram equivalent of electrolyte. So, if the metal atomic weight is Ma, 
its valency or electron that it can lose is z two electrons it can lose. So, therefore, its equivalent gram equivalent will be molecular weight expressed in gram divided by z. So, 96500 coulomb 96500 coulomb will actually deposit you know this much coulomb will deposit m a by z. So, one column will deposit m a by z into 96500 which is you know grams that is Faraday's constant and i t column will deposit that many grams. So, this is f Faraday's constant. So, m a by you know this is given by this is a Faraday's law. The mass of metal deposited or metal dissolved zinc wood or whatever metal is is proportional to the charge you are passing through or i into t and uh, it is given by m a divided by z f into i t. So, that is a galvanic cell when you have two separate electrodes here. So, that is called a galvanic cell right from where you can derive current. A corrosion cell is formed in the same metal anode and cathodes are formed you know if you see this if you see this you have anode and you have cathode from anode metal moves along this direction zinc ion was moving along this direction and uh, electron was moving along this direction and at the cathode you know zinc ion was reaching there and electron was you know electron was passing in this manner. So, at anode actually metal dissolution occurs and at cathode of course, other cathodic reaction would occur. So, you can have some negative anode and cathode formation in the metal itself. For example, this is positive, this is positive, this is positive. So, two electrodes itself might form in the metal itself depending upon of course, its composition because there will be variation in composition. And all metal for example, if I connect zinc with platinum, zinc and platinum obviously, this will always be cathode. Aluminum with iron this will be anode, whereas iron with platinum this will be anode. So, it depends upon the tendency of the metal to lose electron and this also depends upon its composition metal or alloy it could be right how easily it can lose electron. So, this is this we will discuss sometime later on. So, ions you know positive positive uh, cathodes and anodes can form in the same metal itself. So, when you are looking at wet corrosion or aqueous corrosion positive it is electrochemical and at anode and cathode can form in the same metal itself because its composition will differ from point to point and also the concentration of the electrolyte outside may differ. So, all these factors put together you cannot have identical kind of a metal or alloy supposing you consider a rebar it will not be exactly same throughout. So, some portion will have a higher tendency to lose electron some portion will not be where it will have tendency to lose electron that will act like an anode other places it may look it may you know. So, at anode actually oxidation occurs and current enter into electrolyte like I said zinc at cathode reduction occurs current enter into the metal right current into the enter into the metal. So, positive ion will enter into the electrolyte it at cathode positive ion will enter into the metal itself. So, here the difference is corrosion cell you have both anode and cathode in the same metal. Even in same Fe if you see the outside concentration effect as I was saying the metal com you know composition may not be exactly same in this negative zone and positive zone, but supposing I pass nitrogen in the same dilute sodium chloride ion two ion electrodes are there. I pass air here and I pass nitrogen here it is inert here oxygen. So, you will find that actually this will act like a you know like here it will act like an anode where uh, you know and, and this other place it will act like a. So, positive ion moves out of this one positive ion moves out of this one right. In other words electron moves in this direction. So, this is acting as anode and this is acting as cathode. So, this is acting as anode 
where this nitrogen I have passed is lacked as a node compared to this one. So, it also depends upon concentration of the you know uh, concentration of the material in the solution. So, this is nitrogenated I have passed nitrogen from outside. So, that oxygen is driven out here I pass oxygen and one of them will act same material will act like anode and cathode. So, two issues one composition of the metals are not same even concentration of the electrolyte may not be same and therefore, anode and cathode formation can take place within the metal itself and that forms a corrosion cell that forms a corrosion cell. So, differential aeration cell as we call it. So, it forms a corrosion cell and uh, at the anode or cathode at the you know this this is a metal there is an electrical double layer. So, this Helmholtz model which has been later on. So, the charge you know if you see the potential potential there is a double layer exist and potential here and in the bulk electrolyte there is a difference. Initially it was conceived as a linearly varying and the point where it becomes potential does not change anymore that is called outer Helmholtz plane, plane. but then there is a diffuse layer then consumed uh, conceived called Guo Chapman model and then you have got uh, Stern model there is a diffuse layer which is extending and then there is a constant. So, basically electrical double layer formation that occurs at the metal. Well, I think we will not go into details of this at the moment we might come back or discuss this sometime later on. So, basically at the anode metal will come out of this and uh, metal will come out and at the cathode actually hydrogen reaction can occur it is an example not necessarily always hydrogen reaction will occur it would depend upon the composition of the electrolyte itself. So, for example, here water is there and reaction of water with oxygen etcetera if it liberates out hydrogen at the cathode then two hydrogen can form hydrogen molecule in let us say metal in a HCl solution. So, this could be one of the cases where hydrogen evolution is actually occurring right. So, but metal comes out metal comes out. So, here the other reaction so at the cathode actually H2 will generate and at the anode metal will get dissolved. So, that shows and the electron will move like this that again shows a corrosion cell aqueous corrosion cell. So, electrochemical metal dissolution that is what it shows. So, at anode metal gets dissolved and it loses it becomes ion loses two electron who which moves along this direction at cathode two hydrogen accepts electron and but this is not the all the common reaction in some cases this occurs in reinforcement this is not very common, but except in certain cases we shall see that later on. So, in rebar corrosion if this is your reinforcement bar there will be anode somewhere there will be cathode somewhere and at anode ion will dissolve I mean go into the solution Fe 2 plus plus electron will move along this direction and the current flow rate if I call it density as I core and at cathode actually this electron will come out react with water and oxygen to form hydroxyl ion. This hydroxyl ion can further react with this F e to form F e O H 2 which may not be which is usually not stable and can lead to rust formation depending upon the situation or you know environmental condition of the electrolyte itself. So, what forms what kind of rust forms will depend upon the environmental you know electrolyte condition presence of oxygen and moisture therefore, is necessary for corrosion reaction to progress in rebar. Completely dry or fully saturated concrete do not exhibit significant rebar corrosion. Being an electrochemical process concrete resistivity will also play an important role and we will see this later on we will come back to corrosion again. So, this is again shows the corrosion process in concrete, but the reaction shown are different reaction actually hydroxyl ion then iron and they together might form Fe 2 O 3, but may form something else also. Let us see the next reaction anodic reaction is common cathodic reaction either could be this is there and this may react with you know the Fe may itself may react with water forming two hydrogen and this two hydrogen can receive electron and form H 2 or Fe can react with Fe O H 2 or F E O H 2 can react with oxygen and water forming F E O H 3. So, what we see is there can be different reaction possible once 
there are different reaction possible fe wise 3 can break down into fe 2 o 3 ferric oxide and water rust so there are different kind of reaction and different kind of products are possible so different form products form or remain stable depending upon electrolytic condition namely ph or chloride ion concentration chloride ion concentration ph or chloride ion concentration when we are saying depending upon electrolytic condition the environment electrolytic environment mainly it is the ph and chloride ion concentration governs this electrolytic condition so different product can form different product can form now some product are not so dangerous you know for example in case of chloride there could be some sort of loss in the metal this reaction can take place cathodic reaction could be this and then finally fe plus plus can react with this so if it is chloride is there without chloride we have seen the reaction and this may form even a kind of pit fecl2 creates come some kind of rust and finally some sort of product like this is formed there are various kind of products formed or so we'll come back to this sometime later on but what we are trying to say is depending upon the environment different types of product formation can take place we refer some condition called passive condition where it's near to inert condition when corrosion reaction is slow or negligible at high ph oxides form fe2o3 or fe3o4 tends to form a passive layer and protects the river that's why i'm saying at high ph fe3o4 or some black rust as we call it some products are stable while at low ph fe3 if you are h3 of some form we'll come to that sometime later on that is stable which we call as red rust so at lower ph high concentration of chloride passive layer get destroyed and the stable material is stable material is stable material is and the stable material is just let me put it stable material is red rust red rust can form so you see under different condition different product can form red rust can form or black rust can form now an analogy is actually the steel if you look at it when i produce steel i have created an delta g is the potential difference free energy i have changed now if black rust is forming it may be very slow rate if red rusting forming it may be faster rate and if i have provided a full protection coated it it may not you know the rate would be very very small so there all cases there is a tendency of this to come out log t but the tendency is what we call potential thermodynamic tendency but the kinetics which governs the rate log t versus you know uh, the falling rate with log t rate at which it comes back to the stable state they might differ so in a passive state depending upon passive state it might be somewhere there and with a coating complete coating protection 100% no water uh, almost zero water it might be something like this but in a conducive condition the rate could be higher so rate is a function of all this and therefore tendency cannot be controlled but kinetics can be controlled so service life with respect to corrosion we define you see concrete initially is passive but it can lose its passivity it can lose its passivity due to ph reduction or chloride coming in from outside so therefore this we call as depassivation time and this is the corrosion time so there are two things which causes this are carbonation and chloride so therefore first we will look into carbonation and chloride and then their ingress or their effect and then we will look into corrosion so with this we summarize our discussion today we looked into frost attack and the relative models then we introduced river corrosion and we said that normally it can be passive but carbonation and chloride can actually depassivate it so we'll start from this slide last slide that we have just finished in the next class that is next lecture module 8 thank you very much for hearing